Welcome back friends, I am Prashant Kumar, TA for this course, Aircraft Design. We have reached the end of this course and your exams are also approaching, so we will be doing some numericals and we will learn some new things from that numericals. Now, let us see our first numerical. In a flight test, following data were given while trimming the airplane at different speed, data were for speed in meters per second, your angle of attack, lift coefficient, elevator deflection in degrees and CG location. This is data while trimming your aircraft. at different speed. Now, first set of data were at 100 meters per second, your angle of attack was 5 degree, your CL was 0 0.5, elevator deflection was 3 degree up and CG location was 30 percent of mean aerodynamic chord. Second data was at speed of 140 meters per second, angle of attack was 3 degree, CL was 0 0.3, elevator deflection was 1 degree in down direction and CG was 30 percent of mean aerodynamic chord. Oh, third data was conducted at 100 meters per second at angle of attack 4 degrees, CL was 0 0.4, elevator deflection was 0, there were no elevator deflection and CG location was 40 percent of mean aerodynamic chord. The fourth data was at 140 meters per second at angle of attack 1 degree, CL was 0.1, elevator deflection was 1.50 degrees in down direction and CG was 40 percent of mean aerodynamic chord. and lift slope curve of aircraft of aircraft is 0 0.1 per degree and we will assume all other relations are varying linearly. So, the first part was to calculate your stick fixed neutral point. neutral point. So, let us go on with calculation. So, first I will be taking first, first set of data and we have already seen in previous lecture that your delta E deflection is given by delta E naught plus D delta E by D C L trim into C L trim or we can write it as e D delta E by D delta delta C L trim equals to minus of static margin by C M delta E and this is given by minus C m naught 
by C m delta E. So, my final equation will be delta E equals to minus C m naught by C m delta E minus d C m by d C l. into C m delta E into C l, this is C l trim. We know this that d C m by d C l is minus of static margin or it can be written as x C g minus x n p bar. So, we will be, we'll be using that formula. So, delta E equals to minus C m naught by C m delta E minus of x C g minus x n p by C m delta E into C l 10. So, now you can easily take these values from our data and calculate the value of neutral point. So, for x c g equals to 0 0.3 or 30 percent of mean anatomic chord, we will get first equation as minus 3, since delta is 3 degree in up direction equals to minus c m naught by c m delta e minus x c g is 0 0.3 bar minus x bar n p by c m delta e into c l trim for first case is 0 0.5. So, into 0 0.5. Then from second set of data we will get 1 equals to since elevator deflection is in down direction 1 equals to minus c m naught by C m delta E minus C g is same 0 0.3 C bar minus x n p bar by C m delta E and C l trim is 0 0.3. Now, subtracting these two equations, let it be equation 1 and 2. So, 1 minus 2, you will get minus plus minus. So, his, this term will be cancelled and we will get minus 4 equals to 0 0.3 c bar minus x n p bar, this will be common. This is plus, Okay, this will be common and we will get 0 0.3 minus 0 0.5 by C m delta E, which will give me minus 4 equals to 0 0.3 C bar minus x and B bar by C m delta E into minus 0 0.2. This minus this minus will be cancelled and we will get final equation as now evaluating this we will get 20 C m delta E equals to 0 0.3 C bar minus x n p bar. So, let this be equation number 3. Similarly, for x c g equals to 0 0.4 c bar or 40 percent of mean anatomic chord, we will get similar set of equations. From data, third data we will get 0 equals to minus c m naught by c m delta e minus 0 0.4 c bar minus x n p bar by c m delta e into C l term is 0 0.4 and 1.5 equals to minus C m naught by C m delta E 
minus 0 0.4 c bar minus x and p bar by c m delta e into c l trim is 0 0.1 4 5 subtracting 4 from 5 this will be cancelled we will get minus 1.5 equals to 0 0.4 c bar minus x bar and p into c m delta e this is common to 0 0.1 minus 0 0.4. Or minus 1.5 divided by minus 0 0.3 equals to 0 0.4 c bar minus x and p bar by c m delta e, which will give me 5 c m delta e equals to 0 0.4 c bar minus x and p bar. This is equation 6. So, we got two equations from solving the formula and using this data sheet and we will be using now equation 3 and equation 6 to evaluate your stick fixed neutral point. So, let me write equation 3 and 6 here. From 3 we got 20 c m delta e equals to 0 0.3 c bar minus x and p bar and 5 c m delta e equals to 0 0.4 c bar minus x and p bar. We have two unknowns and two equations. So, you can easily solve to get the value of x and p. Now, solve this and you will get x and p bar equals to 0 0.3 c bar plus 0 0.4 c bar 3 equals to 0 0.433 c bar. So, this is the value of six fixed neutral point. You can also calculate the value of C m delta e by substituting this value back into equation you will get C m delta e e as minus 0 0.1 c bar by 15. So, this was regarding first part. Now, for the second part, so this is your stick neutral point. Uh, second part is calculate most aft position of C g, aft position of C g in order to get static margin of 5 percent. For the second part, as we already know that static margin is given as x n p bar minus x c g bar. We have already calculated x n p bar. So, static margin in this case we want as 0 0.05. x n p bar we have already calculated which is 0 0.433 c bar. We have to calculate value of x c g, this whole divided by c bar. So, 0 0.05 c bar equals to 0 0.5. 433 c bar minus x c g. So, x c g will be 0 0.433 c bar minus 0 0.05 c bar, which will be 0 0.383 c bar. So, this is the position of my c g in order to get 
or f most f position of cg in order to get a static margin of 5 percent. So, you can calculate for any value of static margin for instance, I want to calculate x c g at static margin 10 percent, then instead of 0 0.05 you will substitute 0 0.01, 0 0.1 sorry 0 0.1. So, x c g will be 0 0.433 c bar minus 0 0.1 c bar which will give 3 3 3 c bar. So, this concludes your first problem. Now, we will look at a second problem, look at second problem and we will see what all the information we get from that. Let us look at a second problem. For a following, consider a following aircraft with data, aircraft with following data, weight 20,000 kg, cruise velocity 120 meters per second, area 50 meters square, aircraft is flying, flying at an altitude of 4825 meters, x c g of aircraft is given as 0 0.3. stick fixed neutral point, stick fixed neutral point propeller wing milling is zero point five two and for power on case, it is 0 0.46. Drag polar for the aircraft is given as 0.025 equals to 0 0.025 plus 0 0.064 CL square. C L max for cruise flight cruise flight it is 1.2 and during landing phase it is 1.8. CMAC or a, uh, for the aircraft is minus 0 0.1, CL alpha of wing and CL alpha of tail is 0 0.08 per degree, angle of attack as 0 lift is minus 2 degrees incidence angle of wing is 3 degrees, incident angle of tail is minus 2 degree, eta will be assuming at, at 0 0.8, tail volume ratio as 0 0.35, Oswald efficiency will taking as 1. tau will take as 0 0.4 and delta E max or maximum elevator deflection allowed in either direction is plus minus 20 degree. So, these are the information for the aircraft. So, first we have to calculate lift coefficient. Lift coefficient at trim. We already know that for cruise condition we have to calculate C L. We already know that C L is given as 2 W 
by rho s v square. We already know weight, we know cruise velocity, we already know area. The only thing we do not know is this density. We have to first calculate density at 4825 meters. So, for this in order to calculate density, a relation is given as density at height h equals to density at sea level represented by rho naught into T h by T naught to the power of minus g by a r plus 1, where the T naught equals to 2 a T 8.16 r is 287, a equals to minus 0 0.0065 per meter, rho naught equals to 1.225 kg per meter cube and g we know as 9.81 meters per second square. So, first we have to calculate T h. Now, T h is given as T naught plus A into h. T naught we know it is 288.16 plus A is minus 0 0.0065 h is 4825, which will give T h as 256.0065. 797. So, we can now put this value in this equation to get value of density at height h 1.225 into 256.797 by T naught is 288.16 to the power of g is 9.81 divided by a is minus 0 0.0065 into r is 287 plus 1 rho h equals to 1.225 into 256.797 by 288.16 to the power of 4.259. Check this calculation, you will get rho h as 1.225 into 0 0.1 uh, 0 0.612, which is equal to 0 0.7497 that is 0 0.75 kg per meter cube. So, we have to use this value of density in order to get CL trim value. So, now substituting that back to your equation, we know that CL will be for CL cruise into 2 into 20,000 into 9.81 divided by 0 0.75 s is 50 and v square is 120 whole square, which will give me 0 0.726. This is C L cruise value. So, for this problem, do not take the value of density at sea level, you have to calculate density at that particular height. Now, for the second part, we have to calculate what is a downwash angle at tail. Uh, second part is downwash angle, downwash angle at tail. It is represented by eta naught 
and we have already seen the formula that is 2 C L naught of wing by pi into aspect ratio, where we know that C L naught of wing can be calculated using formula C L alpha of wing into angle of attack S 0 lift. So, we can calculate this value because we already know C L alpha of wing. We do not know what is aspect ratio of this aircraft. So, in order to calculate aspect ratio, we will be using your drag polar equation that is C d equals to C d naught plus k C L square. We already know that drag polar for this aircraft is 0.025 plus 0 0.064 C L square, where k is given as 1 by pi aspect ratio into E. So, using that value, we will get 0 0.064 equals to 1 by pi into aspect ratio E we know that is 1. So, from there you will get aspect ratio equals to 1 by pi into 0 0.064 into 1, which will be around 4.97 that is 5. Now, we know what is aspect ratio. So, we can, we can calculate uh, down wash angle. So, substituting these values and C O oh, okay C L naught of wing equals to 0 0.08 because it is mentioned here that C L alpha of wing and tail is 0 0.08 per degree into and angle of attack as your lift is minus 2. So, this will give me 0 0.0 Okay, now downwash angle will be 2 into 0 0.16 by pi into 5, which will give me 0 0.02 radians. Remember, this will be in radian. In order to convert it into degrees, can multiply this multiply this by 57.3 which will give me 1.167 degrees now third part is to calculate cm not for whole aircraft this sort of problem we have already done cm not of aircraft is third part cm not equals to C m naught of wing plus C m naught of fuselage plus C m naught of tail, where C m naught of wing equals to C m a c plus C l naught of wing into x c g minus x a c by c bar. Now, here we do not know what is the position of aerodynamic center. So, let us assume that in this case x c g equals to x a c that is your c g is at aerodynamic center. So, this term will be 0. So, c m naught of wing will be only due to c m a c. We will assume that c m naught of fuselage is 0. C m naught of tail we have seen is given by eta v h C l alpha tail into epsilon naught plus incidence angle of wing minus incidence angle of tail. Eta is 0 0.8, v h is 0 0.35, C l alpha of tail is 0 0.08, this is in degree. Epsilon naught we calculated from previous section that is 
I w is 3 degrees and I t is minus of 2 degrees, which will be 0 0.08 into 0 0.35 into 0 0.08 into 6.167, which will give me 0 0.1381 this is the value of C m naught, sorry C m naught of, this is the value of C m naught of tail. So, the total C m naught of aircraft will be minus 0 0.1, this is the value of C m a c, which is equal to C m naught of wing and plus 0 0.1381. So, total C m naught of aircraft is 0 0.0381. Okay. Now, fourth part is, now fourth problem is to calculate C m delta E, which is very easy, because we know C m delta E is minus eta V h C l alpha t into 1 oh sorry into tau into tau 0 0.8 v h is 0 0.35 into 0 0.08 and tau we are taking as 0 0.4 which will be minus 0 0.0086 per degree or if you want in terms of radian, this will be 0 0.1513 uh, per radian. Fifth is static margin for cruise condition. So, static margin will be x and p minus x c g. x and p for power on condition is 0 0.46, because this is in cruise condition. So, power will be on. So, that is why we are taking for power on. So, 0 0.46 x c g is given as 0 0.3, which will be 0 0.16. Similarly, sixth is static margin for landing. So, static margin equals to x and p minus x c g, which will be 0 0.52. This will be for propeller wing milling minus 0 0.3, which will be 0 0.2. Uh, seventh part is we have to calculate delta E required for trim. We have already seen in previous problem that delta E equals to delta E naught plus we have already seen in previous condition previous problem that delta E is given as minus C m naught by C m delta E minus of d C m by d C l by C m delta E into C l trim. So, delta E will be minus C m naught we calculated in previous section that is 0 0.0381 and C m delta E was minus 0 0.00896 minus static margin for trim condition that is minus of 0.16 because this is minus of static margin divided by C m delta is again minus 0 
0.896 and CL trim we calculated in your first section which was 0 0.726. This will be 4.252 minus 12.964. Which is minus 8.712 degrees. So, this is the value of elevator deflection in order to get your CL trim equals to 0.2726. Your eighth part is to calculate the F position of CG or in our case, since we assume that CG equals to AC. So, F position of CG or F position of AC permissible during landing. So, most F position of CG permissible during landing. Again, we will use same formula that is delta E equals to minus C m naught by C m delta E minus of D C m by D C L by C m delta E into C L trim. So, maximum we know that maximum delta E deflection is plus minus 20 degree. So, I will use maximum deflection that is minus 20 degrees C m naught we have already calculated 0 0.0381 C m delta E also we have calculated 0 0.00896 minus 0 0.0896 plus 0.0896 plus x c g minus x and p by c m delta e which is 0 0.00896 into c l trim during landing is 1.8. So, 1.8. Now, substituting all the values this will be for landing it is 0.52. So, minus 0 0.0381 by minus 0 0.00896 minus x c g minus 0 0.52 by minus 0 0.00896 into 1.8, which will be 4.252 plus 200.89 into x c g minus 0 0.52 and final x c g value will be 0 0.379. So, this is the most f position of c g permissible during landing. Okay. Now, the next part was to calculate C L max during cruise maximum C L max during cruise and your C G should be in the range of C D should be in range of 16 percent to 35 percent. Same formula that is delta E equals to minus C m naught by C m delta E minus of D C m by D C L by C m delta E into C L. Substituting delta E minus 20 C m naught we have already calculated 0 0.0381 by minus 0 
minus, I'll take the maximum range of CG that is 0.35 minus 0. Point, uh, for cruise was 0. 0.46 by minus 0. 0.00896 CL max I have to calculate. So, this will be minus 20 equals to 4.252 minus 12.277 into CL max. Please check for these numbers. So, we will get minus 24.252 equals to minus 12.277 CL max or C L max equals to 1.9575. So, this is the maximum value of lift coefficient with your C G in permissible range or C D in the range of 16 to 35 percent. Substitute the value of C G at 16 percent and calculate what is the C L max in that case and you can change the range and calculate or what will be your C L max for different set of C G's. Now, for the third problem, following information is given. It is a small U A V with area as 0 0.5184 meter square. This is wing area, tail area it is 0 0.08 3, 3 meter square, tail span is 0 0.490 meters, wing span is 2.16 meters, your tail arm is 0 0.7562 meters. XCG is 0 0.3716 of mean anatomic chord. Weight is 4.5 kg. CM naught of fuse large is minus 0 0.037. CM alpha of fuse large is 0 0.12 per radian. E we will be taking as 1. Velocity, cruise velocity is 15 meters per second. Mean atomic chord C bar is 0 0.2422 meters. Now, air foil data, wing CMAC is minus 0 0.0952, CL alpha this is for air foil is 0 0.096 per degree angle of attack at zero lift is minus 3.5 degrees x x ac of aircraft is 0 0.3237 c bar Wing incidence angle is 2 degrees, tail CMAC since this is a symmetrical airfoil CMAC will be 0, CLL for of tail will be 0 0.1156 per degree and tail setting angle is 
minus 3 degrees. Now, first part is your calculation of CM naught, which is we have done many times at alpha equals to 0 or alpha equals to 0 or C L naught of wing. Uh, we will assume that eta equals to 1. First of all, what is aspect ratio of wing? It is b square by s that is 2.16 divided by 0 0.5184 equals to 9. Aspect ratio of tail equals 0 0.49 square by 0 0.0833 which will be 2.88. We have airfoil data C L alpha 2 D. We need C L alpha 3 D or for a wing which will be 5.506 divided by 1 plus 5.506 by pi into 9 into 1. This is nothing but, but 0 0.0 airfoil, ah, see 0 0.096 was in degree, I have converted into radian. This will give me, for 3 D it will be 4.608 per radian. Similarly, for tail C L alpha 2 D tail, we want C L alpha 3 D tail, which will be 6.623 by 1 plus 6.623 by pi into 2.88 into 1, which will give me 3.8 8 to 4 per radian. Once we have calculated your lift coefficient for wing and tail, then we can go on further by for calculating C M naught will be C M naught of wing plus C M naught of fuselage plus C M naught of tail. C M naught of wing is given as C M A C plus C L naught of wing into X C G minus X A C bar, which will give me C M A C is given by 0 0.0952 plus C L naught of wing, you know it will be C L alpha of wing by alpha naught alpha at 0 lift. Since this was given in degree, we have to convert it into radians. Since C L alpha of wing, I am using as radian. 3 into C G is 0 0.3716 C bar minus A C is 0 0.3237 3 C bar. And I will get C M naught of wing as minus 0 0.0817. C M naught of fuselage is already given, which is minus 0 0.037. C M naught of tail, we can calculate using eta V H C L alpha T epsilon naught plus minus I tail. Always, always see whether this you are taking in degrees or radian which will give me 1 into V H into C L alpha T, we will get as we got 3.824 epsilon naught, then incidence angle of wing was 2 degree, 
I'll taking this. I'm taking this in radians, so I'll divide by 57.3 minus incidence angle of tail tail was minus 3 degrees by 57.3. We have to calculate V H and epsilon naught. Now V H is given by L T S T by S C bar. We know L T as 0.7562. Tail area is given as 0.0833. Wing area is 0.5184. And mean and mean chord is given as 0.2422. We'll get VHS. 0.5017. Similarly, epsilon naught, 2 CL alpha naught by pi into aspect ratio. It will be 2 into 0 0.2815 by pi into 9, which will be 0 0.0199. Substituting these values in this equation, you will get C m naught of tail equals to 0 0.2056. So, your total C m naught will be 0 0.0817 plus minus 0 0.037 plus 0 0.2056 which is equal to 0 0.0869. This is a value of CM naught. Second part is calculate static margin. A static margin is x and p minus x c g bar into 100 static margin ok. Now, x and p is given as x and p bar equals to x a c bar minus c m alpha of fuselage by c l alpha of wing minus eta V h into C L alpha of tail by C L alpha of wing into 1 minus d epsilon by d alpha. d epsilon by d alpha is 2 into C L alpha of wing by pi into aspect ratio which is 2 into 4.608 by pi into 9 equals to 0 0.3261. Therefore, x and p are equals to 0 0.3237 minus 0 0.12 CM alpha is given as CM alpha, huh, CM alpha is given as 0 0.12 per radian, 0 0.12, 4.608 minus eta we have taken as 1, VH we calculated as 0 0.5017, CL alpha of tail is 3.824 by C L alpha of wing is 4.608 into 1 minus 0 0.3261. X and P will get us 0 0.5782. Therefore, static margin is 0. 5782 minus 0 
3716 equals to 0.2012 or static margin in percentage will be 20.12 percent. So, this aircraft has static margin of 20 percent. Now, the third part is the main which I wanted to explain. Till now, we have not considered the moment which is generated due to difference in the thrust line and location of CG, if they are not aligned. So, this part will be dealing with that. Suppose, this is your aircraft. your thrust and suppose your CG is here. So, due to this difference, you will get a moment about CG in this direction. So, for this case, your C M naught will be combination of C M naught of wing plus C M naught of fuse large plus C m naught of tail and C m naught due to static thrust. Now, in this case, we have to calculate this value C m naught of static thrust. Now, C m naught of static thrust is given as your static thrust into your distance between C G and your thrust line. Suppose, this is distance between them is 0 0.06 meters. So, this D divided by half rho v square area of wing into c bar. This is the value of C m naught due to static thrust. Now, for this aircraft static thrust was static thrust is equal to 27.47 Newton. Now, I will be substituting this value, we will get 27.47 into distances or differences 0 0.06 meters half rho we are using at sea level, velocity is 15 meters per second, area we know 0 0.5 0 0.017 into mean anatomic chord 0 0.2422, which will, will get value as 0 0.095. So, total C m naught equals to, we calculated from previous when we assumed that your thrust line is aligned with C g, it was 0. 0.0869 and if thrust line or no, thrust line is not aligned with CG, then this term will be added 0 0.095, which is 0 0.182. So, you can see even at 0 angle of attack, you will be getting value of C m naught as 0.182, which is very high. So, Suppose, I want to trim my aircraft for velocity 15 meters per second. So, your C L will be 2 into 4.5 into 9.81 by 1.225 S was 0 0.5184 into 15 meters square we will get as 0 0.619 C L. 
Suppose I want to trim my aircraft at 0.6179 and maintaining a static margin which was 20 percent, 20.12 percent and I am getting CM naught with thrust difference as uh, alignment of CG and thrust line as 0.12. So, what should be my elevator deflection? So, uh, that I nullify my net pitching moment and get a trim at 0.61. 7 9. So, we already know that equation that delta E trim is given as minus C m naught by C m delta E minus of D C m by D C L by C m delta E into C L trim. My value of C m naught is 0 point minus uh, 0 point 0.182 by C m delta E we can calculate using eta minus eta V h C l alpha t into tau. Tau here we have taken as 0 0.5, this we have taken as 0 0.5. 0.5. You will get C m delta E as minus 0 0.959 or 0 minus 0 0.0167 per degree. Now, substituting this value in above equation, we will get 0 0.0167 minus static margin we are taking as 20.12 percent. So, it will be minus 0 0.2012 divided by minus of 0 0.0167 C L trim is 0 0.6179. Now, substituting this or Evaluating this, we will get C L C delta E trim equals to 3.45 degrees. So, from this we can see in order for my aircraft to trim at 0 0.619 and maintain a static margin of 20 percent, I have to give a 3 degree deflection to elevator to nullify my difference between your thrust line and your CG.